Brothers! This day is turning against us. Hail the fleet! Do not lose that station! Hello everyone, Wylock here. Thanks for joining me today. I was looking at my work in progress shelf the other day and just noticed some components that have been bothering me for a while. They've been on there for, in some cases, years. And I thought there has to be a way to combine at least two or three of these to come up with my next piece of sci-fi terrain. So that's what I did. I made this communication station. Neat little gimmick here. See, you can rotate the dish and it moves like this. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I filmed the process of making it so that I could show you. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. So I got this foam board building lined with chipboard. I was bored one night and just bashed it together. It's as simple as it looks. Bunch of rectangles just hot glued together. And this antenna dish I made like three years ago and never finished. Been sitting on the shelf ever since and tonight I do something with these empty two liter bottle, and then with a marker resting on something of the right height, pin the bottle to the desktop and rotate it around to get a perfect cut line around the perimeter. Cut that out and that's the basis for the dish. I busted open all my junk bins looking for some other stuff to use. I must reduce my stock and this project is a good opportunity to do that. This is a make your own popsicle kit and the sticks themselves look pretty good for sci-fi fits right in the two liter top, so I hot glued that in. Now I did experiment with some other stuff. I had several bottles, so I was gonna make several dishes. Here's a milk cap with a drink stirrer glued on and surrounded by a hair curler shell. These hair curlers were from the dollar store. And that was on track to look pretty cool, but look what happened. I injected way too much hot glue and it warped the entire dish. It's an oval now. So I tried again, only to find that the inside of a milk cap resists hot glue and super glue. Nothing seems to stick to it. Also, I warped this one again. So now I'm down to just the original that I made three years ago from the shelf. I just added on the drink stirring stick and the hair curler. There we go. I'm going to set that aside and work on the building. I've got all sorts of greeble here from my collection. I also have some graphics medium chipboard some styrene rods, leftover warhammer bits, wires, and cross-stitching mesh, which I'm going to use for the floors. I used hot glue to attach that mesh, using the glue only at the edges, and then installed chipboard strips to cover up those ugly edges. Then I just worked my way around the building attaching stuff with hot glue at will. This was super fun and really gratifying. It felt like losing weight, honestly. Large subcomponents off my work in progress shelf and thinning out my various greeble piles that I've kept for years. Love it. You really can't go wrong here, but I will say one thing I've learned recently is that you can't go overboard. The more detail you add to grimdark terrain, the better it's gonna look. Again, I feel the need to pause and just re-emphasize that point one more time. I talked about this a few videos ago when I did the Profane Altar, but this piece of advice that I got from Miscast just continues to strike home with me that the more detail you put in, the better you can get away with an easy paint job. Uh, if you're new to this whole thing, it's called greebling, so adding surface detail to make flat surfaces look more interesting. So what I've been doing lately as an exercise is asking myself, all right, does it look filled out? Do I feel like I'm done and ready to paint? Yeah, but I don't, I keep going. And by the third time I've asked myself that question, I then allow myself to begin painting. And what I found is my final results are starting to look better. They're more like what I wish they would look like. You know, I am an amateur terrain maker. I've been doing this for about six years, as long as the channel, basically. And uh, to some extent, my style, my the aesthetic that I like, that's me, uh, is a little more simplistic in some ways. I'm never gonna be like a, a Luke Toen or something like that. 
But the point is, if you're like me and you've been struggling to elevate your final results a little bit and just get to the next level, again, that one sentence has just opened floodgates for me lately. Revisiting my eye beams from the extractor tutorial a few weeks ago, these are just 3 8 inch strips of chipboard hot glued together into an eye beam which is then hot glued to the building and these are going to hold up walkways. The walkways, again, identical to what I did in the extractor episode. They're one and a quarter inch wide and it's just a sandwich of food box cardstock, removing some middle sections and then making a sandwich with them with some cross stitching mesh in the middle. Use white glue and books to weigh them down. So yeah, outside for primer, and despite what you see here, I actually ended up using a dark brown spray primer that I forgot I had. So then it's a metallic silver overbrush. Not gunmetal, but bright silver. I tried to get away with using gunmetal because I have a ton of it, but it's too dark, and later after the weathering steps, it becomes barely even visible. So don't be afraid of a strong bright silver here. It's stronger than a dry brush, but not as strong as a base coat. Then with this light denim blue color, I stippled on the wall. Now I tried this as a stippling motion instead of brush strokes, and that gave me both a rough border where the wall meets a steel support beam, like where rust is beginning, and it helped to not have brush stroke textures for the most part. Here it is after the first coat, and I did two more thin coats after this to fill it in and help smooth it out. Then I picked out some metallic golds and bronzes in a few spots around the building. Attached the catwalks with modest dabs of hot glue. And now to start tying it all together. First, a black wash. Simply black acrylic craft paint mixed with water to the consistency you see here. There's a lot of vertical space on this project, so I did mix it a little bit rich so that it would have some legs and cling to the walls a little better. After a couple minutes, it's already almost dry and lightened up. I went back and just stippled on some spots, just for some more pockmarked randomness. Next up, my latest obsession, Vallejo Rust Effect Texture Paint. I find it works best to dab it on neat from the bottle and then rinse the brush and dab at the edges to blend them into the surface. Okay, back to the dish itself. Turns out a Gatorade bottle cap fits inside of a prescription bottle cap perfectly. Also I have this plastic drink stirring stick. So I drilled a hole through the centers of those two caps. And here's some random wood bit from the craft store. Literally any sort of cylindrical or cone-shaped thing will work here to hot glue the stick into. And then the idea was to feed it through both caps, but only hot glue it to the inside of the orange Gatorade cap, while keeping pressure on the whole stack so that it stays nice and tight as the hot glue is cooling. The result is this, a smoothly rotating turret. Back to the junk bins for some kind of base, I found this. I think it's an end cap for a roll of drafting paper, but it's the perfect size. Hot glued the rim of the prescription bottle cap only to this base. A strip of cardstock to cover that ugly seam. And here we go, rotating base of the dish is ready to go. I drilled through the neck of the bottle and ran a stirring stick through that as well. Choosing a slightly smaller diameter drill bit means there's a lot of friction on that stick, which is what I'm counting on to keep it in place. Here's some kids meal toys. I just trimmed them up and hot glued them, one on each side. Then I built this bracket out of chipboard. It's just a bunch of rectangles hot glued together, sized to fit the prongs on those toy bits, which also get hot glued in. And finally, the moment of truth, that whole assembly gets hot glued onto the rotating base, taking care to make sure it's centered.
And now we've got two axis motion. Sweet. Last second addition, I felt the dish curve itself needed something, so I glued on some cardstock strips. Painting it up, nothing new here except the dish itself. I did that with a light neutral gray to differentiate it from the slight bluish shade of the building below. But yeah, after that, it's a black wash, Vallejo environmental effects, etc. I hot glued this thing to the top of the building and used a copious amount of hot glue. I'm counting on this to seep down beneath the grating to the foam board below. I don't just want to stick this to the grating, because the grating itself isn't secured to the floor, except way out at the perimeter. So this deluge of hot glue should spread through and tie it all together nice and strong. First we're going to take a close up look at it and then I'm going to return you to that scene you saw at the beginning of the episode which I know is very cringe inducing. <laughs> Whatever. I did fail to mention that this computer screen here, I did try to paint it. Couldn't figure it out so I ended up doing a print and paste thing. Here are the things that I see up close as I'm recording this and, and doing this final edit. The borders where the blue changes to rust uh, need to be feathered more. I thought I had done a good job in the moment. From two feet away, it looks great, but now really, really honed in up close, I can see needed to be a little more feathered. Also, in the process of applying those strips on the dish, it ended up warping the dish a little bit, but at that point I was like, whatever. Once again, can't harp enough about that rust texture from Vallejo. Really cool paint. Great at making novices look pretty good. I did pick that denim blue to match the drill of the extractor. These are all part of what I'm going to call my Mars set of terrain, the same aesthetic, same paint schemes. It's tempting when you want to give it your all in a project that you think you need to use every trick in the book. Really, you need to use as few tricks as possible. I think I only used like five colors on this entire thing, but that actually ties it together better than using like 30 shades, just making it look really eclectic. And here again is the gimmick with the moving dish. Actually, now that I think about it, if it is pointed a certain direction, then a large flyer base could not land on top of the building. So maybe it does have a purpose. And this is a part where I would normally try and fill the void, but I'm gonna try and just let it be. So here's some scenery, some models to look at, and I'll just shut up for a minute. So there it is, putting a little more effort in, getting a little better every week. Uh, if you're new to this whole concept of crafting for your tabletop games, be sure you find us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild, 33,000 strong and growing. And if you liked today's particular project, then here's two more videos that I recommend you check out. Till I see you next time, I'm Wylock, make things and play games. <laughs>